Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest talk. And this is going to be a talk focusing on mucinous cystic neoplasms, or MCNs, of the pancreas. We're going to look at their CT appearance. We're going to look at some key imaging features. And we're going to try to figure out a way to help us make the diagnosis prospectively on CT. One of the things we've spoken about, of course, is that we just don't want to say there's a cystic lesion in the pancreas because there's many things that can be cystic lesions. So we spoke last time about spend tumors, talking about younger patients, teens, 20s, female, the typical and the range of CT appearances, and the same thing with MCNs. MCNs have certain unique characteristics. They're almost exclusively in women. They're, count, they're found more commonly toward the tail of the pancreas, often the body tail junction. They can have cyst wall calcifications, a thickened septation or an enhancing nodule can occur. Nodules are typically seen in patients with higher grade dysplasia. Occasionally, the capsules can enhance, but that is a bit less common. They typically are not associated with liver metastasis. You can see small nodes nearby, but unlikely to see vascular involvement or infiltration of the peripancreatic tissues. They're an unusual tumor in that their age is younger than adenocarcinoma, but it's older than spend tumors. They're typically in the middle age females, which means about age 45. The majority are benign, but they're all considered pre-malignant. And although some people say you can follow them, most people who have MCNs will have them resected because you can cure the patient. Particularly at age 45, having a cystic lesion, you want to remove that lesion. You don't want to be in the position where the patient then develops a high-grade neoplasm and you can't cure the patient. So it's a very, very important diagnosis. In terms of articles, this article by Alejandro Garcia Stescovich, uh, made the point that the mean age is 45, and it's called the mother cyst. Almost 95% or so of the population that gets them is female. And again, the clinical presentation can range from abdominal pain to being an incidental finding. So that becomes very important. In general, they're rare tumors, but I have to admit, we do see a reasonable number of them. They often come to pancreatic uh, cyst clinic where no one knows specifically what they are. They may undergo EUS. Typically, key findings are the fact you do not see a dilated pancreatic duct. You do not see dilated common duct, but typically they're in the body, so that's not really going to help, help all that much. But again, the concern is the fact they can become malignant. Now, I don't think we can do a good job typically in most cases saying malignant or not. Obviously, if you have mural nodules and they're enhancing or the tumor appears to be aggressive, then it's easy. But the majority of cases, it's hard to tell low grade versus middle grade versus high grade. I'll show you a bunch of cases during this lecture, but you can see that that's one of the hopes we have for potentially for deep learning, work Bert Vogelstein is doing on cis fluid. All those things may be helpful long term. Now, when I speak about cystic pancreatic lesions, here's a laundry list. MCN and SPEN, we spoke about SPEN last time, both more common in female. MCN, age 45, SPEN, age 25. So the age, the history I mentioned to you already, calcifications when they occur are in the periphery of the lesion. They're not central like things like cirrhosis adenomas are. Septations are important. They often contain ovarian stroma, and that explains often the septations, and you can have rim enhancement. So one of the things uh, that I think is very important is this lack of dilated pancreatic duct. One of the key differential diagnoses you're going to have to make is IPMN versus MCN. The age group can be very similar, particularly when they're smaller, they can look similar. And one key feature is that MCNs do not have a dilated pancreatic duct. Uh, also, MCNs rarely are multiple and IPMNs are commonly multiple. And this, the stroma, this ovarian type stroma, really explains many of the septations. Other things we think about, typically smooth external contour, but again, many cystic lesions, particularly IPMNs, have a smooth contour. 
An enhancing wall when it occurs is a helpful sign, though the majority of cases I see don't have an enhancing wall. Peripheral calcifications can be helpful, not specific, and also don't occur that frequently. And again, the thickened septations, we can see septations in many lesions from serous cystadenomas might be a good thing to think about, but it's kind of a swirly type lesion, younger female, right location, that can really help me out. Now, this idea about can you predict high-grade dysplasia or malignancy, well, the only feature that really has shown up to be true to date has been a size greater than 8.5 centimeters. So that means in most cases, we rarely see lesions that large. In most cases, you don't have good predictors, which is why often the lesion will be resected. MCN size over 8.5 cm and volume are the only features on CT or MR that correlate with high-grade dysplasia or carcinoma. The average growth rate for MCNs is slow at about four millimeters per year. Now, when you look at the guidelines for incidental pancreatic cysts, and as I mentioned, MCNs are often detected incidentally, you can see whether it's the AGA or the ACR or the International Association of Pancreatology, they all have different criteria for follow-up. But if you could recognize something as an MCN, you're not going to have to deal with this criteria. So what I'm going to do now is show you a number of cases. Some will look similar to each other, which is obviously going to be the case, but many are different. And I try to give you a large spectrum of appearances. Some of you know that I give conference on Wednesday or I've told you about it. And often when I quiz the faculty on pancreatic cysts, I'll sneak some of these MCNs in, particularly the ones that are atypical. But here's a very typical one, body to tail of pancreas. You can see the septation. Often the septations will be shown better on venous phase imaging. Often the septations will be shown better when I do cinematic rendering. There's no dilated duct. There's some atrophy of the distal gland. On the uh, volume rendering on your right, you can see slight enhancement in the wall, but it really shows you the septations very nicely. And here's a few more images showing you that. Here's the cinematic rendering compared to the axial imaging. And cinematic rendering is really good at showing texture, and septations really are textural changes. So when you look at fluid on cinematic rendering, water tends to be red, and the septations really stand out nicely. The septations are much more impressive on the cinematic than they are in the axial images, though you see them in both. And here again is another set of the cinematic images. On the right, what I did is I made the lesion more transparent to show you the vessel. So again, seeing septations on cinematic rendering is really dependent on the um, presentation you use for rendering that information. Here's another case. This is six centimeters tail of pancreas. Again, some atrophy of the distal gland. There's no dilated pancreatic duct. On arterial phase, maybe there's a little bit thickening of the wall at about nine o'clock. Here it is as we go to the coronal view, but this was simply a low-grade dysplasia. Now you can see, yes, it looks like a little bit of thickening and septation, which makes the point that not everything which has slight nodularity or surely septations is going to be of concern, but I do worry about it more. But this was resected, and I think you have no choice based on size, presentation, and appearance. But fortunately for this patient, it was a low-grade dysplasia. This case also nicely shows you the classic location, body-tail junction, but also how the lesions often tend to be somewhat exophytic and there is no dilated pancreatic duct. If this was an IPMN, you surely would see a dilated pancreatic duct. Another example, okay, nice cystic lesion, same location. Another example, a larger lesion. Here the septations are more prominent. Again, something we mentioned quickly before was it's not uncommon to get atrophy of the distal gland, but often you'll see atrophy, but not a dilated duct, which is a very, Helpful pearl, I think, in that regard. Here it is again, a few more images. Now, despite the septations, this is a good example of a patient with low-grade dysplasia, but it does make the point that seeing septations, and in this case, numerous septations, 
does not allow you to make the diagnosis of high-grade dysplasia. Again, the volume rendering, a little bit better showing you the extent of septations. You can see the vessels are well-defined, typically with MCNs, particularly the non-invasive ones, which are the more common ones. The vessels are going to be displaced, stretching of the splenic artery, displacement of the SMA, displacement of the splenic vein. So no invasion, just simply displacement. Here's a few more images, very nicely showing you the volume rendering. And again, septations, nodularity. As I mentioned, you surely would worry in this case that this could be a high-grade or a moderate-grade dysplasia. But despite the normal or numerous appearances of things that would make you concerning, this ended up not being uh, malignant, and it was a low-grade dysplasia. But again, this was resected based on size and based on potential. Now, another example. Here is a lesion coming off the body of the pancreas. At first glance, I would have considered a lymphoepithelial cyst, but this has a rim calcification on the bottom of the lesion. Typically, lymphoepithelial cysts never have calcification. You look at this lesion a little bit closer, and it really is coming off the gland. This was operated on, this patient was 73, not the right age typically for an MCN, but this was an MCN, did not involve the vessels, but it was coming off the gland. A very, very nice appearance of that patient's tumor. Again, here it is with volume rendering, very nicely shown. And again, this is one of the challenges. This case, an IPMN, I don't think so because the calcification is usually not that coarse. Um, lymphopathelial cyst, typically not. Serous cyst adenoma, I guess it's possible. A challenging diagnosis, but this was an MCN. And again, here's just a few more views showing you that. Another case, MCN, again, with somewhat of an exophytic appearance. You see the gland very nicely thinned around the lesion. Despite the mass effect of this lesion, there is no evidence of pancreatic duct dilatation. This lesion had intermediate grade dysplasia. So again, I'm not sure where I would get the worry about that here. As I look at the lesion, I have the calcification, but I don't see any uh, nodularity. I don't see any really large septations. So again, making the point, there is some enhancement at the edge of the lesion, best seen on the uh, volume rendered views. But again, there's no way you could have predicted its aggressiveness. Again, the septation here, again, the septation showing better on the venous than on the arterial phase image. So just a very nice example. Another case, here you can see the MCN is smaller. This one you surely would think about an IPMN as well, but as I mentioned, I like to see dilated ducts or at least visualize the duct and the cystic lesion communicating with the duct for an IPMN. Here, I don't see a dilated duct and I don't see communication. You can see the pancreas very nicely. And again, a few more images showing you that. So again, well-defined lesion, tail of pancreas, MCN. Okay, not an easy call. This surely would get EUS, and after they had EUS, they removed this lesion. Another example. Here's a lesion. It looks like there's some soft tissue in the lesion. The walls aren't sharply defined. It's somewhat cystic. This is an MCN as well. It's more challenging, and you surely would worry about this being of higher grade. This was intermediate grade because you can see thickened septations, some thickening of the wall, some nodularity, and you see some of these secondary findings a lot better when you're looking at the volume rendering, which is the case here. Another example of atrophy of the distal gland without any true duct dilatation. Looks like lots of septations when you look at the delayed phase imaging, which is venous phase. And again, so I surely would be worrying about this lesion and the potential for malignancy. So you can see it very nicely here with the septations nicely shown. Um, again, distal pancreatectomy and splenectomy, and the patient did well. Another case, same location, septations, some prominent vessels nearby, some nodularity. Again, I think what I could do very well in this case is say this is an MCN. 
Now you could say IPMN, but IPMNs, again, you would see dilated duct, but you don't see the septations, which you see here. Could this be a serous cyst adenoma? We talk about that Swiss cheese appearance of classic serous cyst adenomas, but you can get oligocystic serous cyst adenomas where there's no septations. That could be a challenge. Age group's a bit different. Or you can have a serous cyst adenoma with just some septations. It can be challenging, but when I put all the features together, the septations, the location, the patient's age, the lack of duct dilatation, lack of enhancement, I'm going with an MCN. And here again is the um, cinematic rendering showing you the septations a whole lot better on the, um, on the uh, cinematic than on the axial imaging. And again, as I mentioned, one of the things we are looking at is the potential role of AI in looking at cinematic and being better able than us to classify cystic pancreatic lesions. And here's just a few more images of that. And again, nicely shown in the coronal plane. Again, one challenge, of course, with cinematic rendering is the ability to change the texture mapping on a case-by-case -case basis. And so you want to be careful you don't over-accentuate or under-accentuate the findings. But I think it's not that tricky in this case. Another example, cystic lesion. Again, what am I thinking of? I would ask the age, I would ask the sex. But again, possibilities, IPMN, eh. Serous cyst adenoma, oligocystic type, possibility. Um, that, I kind of run out of things. And of course, MCN. And this was an MCN. I think the atrophy of a distal gland, the lack of duct dilatation, there is a calcification present. I think all of that together puts you in the MCN category. So again, I'm not going to say we're perfect at this, but I think we are really good. Here's a few more images showing that using cinematic rendering. And again, low grade dysplasia, very hard. Now, I mentioned that the age range is variable and we say 45 female, but this was a 19 year old female. You might have thought about a serous cyst adenoma. You could have thought about a lymphopathelial cyst that really doesn't quite look like it. So it's important to recognize that MCNs can occur in younger patients. This was a low grade tumor. You do not see septations, you do not see nodularity. It is well defined. And when you look hard on the venous phase, there are some thin septations. So again, an important thing to remember. Now, in this case, probably I would have said a spent tumor. Spens can be cystic and solid, at times can be only cystic, but usually not this cystic. But you gotta admit 19 year old female, without even looking at the image, you're saying a spent tumor regardless. So again, a very nice look at that tumor. And here it is with volume rendering. And again, you can see what looks like maybe a little wall enhancement. And here it is a cinematic, which shows you a little bit better those subtle septations, how well-defined the lesion is, and shows you all of that information allowing you to diagnose an MCN. So why don't we do this? I have a few more cases I'd like to show you, but uh, we've gone for about 18 minutes and 23 seconds, but who's counting? So let's stop right here. Let's take a five minute break, get a drink, get a snack, and we'll come right back and finish part two. Thanks a lot. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.